Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, 8 a.m. Uh, I think we'll give it until a few minutes after to make sure we get some of the stragglers in here before we get started. Hey, Ben, you out there? Yeah, I'm just going to share my screen, folks. OK. All right, can folks see my screen? Yep. All right. So um, we've got a, I think a lighter agenda today. I think the one thing I did want to add to the agenda was future topics, which it sounds like people started capturing with next week. OK. So um, let's jump in. Um, so Clint, I think you added a couple of these. Yep. I have uh, that deck that I that we created there. Um, I don't know if we want to bring that up and, and walk through it with the agenda. It should pretty much line up with what we have so far in, in there. So the, well, the thing I wanted to open up with was the, uh, the work voting and uh, the test voting and the status of that right now. Uh, I think that 
uh, I counted it last night and out of the nine TOC members, I think that there were four that had binding votes on Rook and I think that it needs to get to six. Is that, uh, is that accurate from your assessment, Ben? Yeah, I think two thirds is right, yep. Yeah, there, there was a uh, Clint, just a, there was a technicality around uh, voting. The new email system was actually turning plus ones into likes on the post. So Chris, <laughs> Chris is following up on that. Um, I saw Ken Owens just fix that. Um, and then Camille is about to fix it. Uh, so that, that's, that was what's going on there. Okay. So it, it may have that, that six majority then at this point. It looks like it. Okay, cool. So it sounds like we'll have some type of an announcement one way or another on that uh, pretty soon. That's good. Excellent. Uh, how about the test, Ben? Do you know anything about the, the test schedule for voting? I think that was invited, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah I'm not sure exactly how Chris is, is doing it. <laughs> I think maybe he's not trying to inundate too many votes simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So he's just got two open right now, Rook and Linker D. Um, that's my guess. I'm not sure if he has an algorithm. My understanding is that Vitesse is next after Rook, um, which will likely be next week. He'll call the vote or start the thread next week. Cool. Uh, I think, you know, what, for anybody on the call, if you have any feedback that, that you're looking to, that you think that you want to contribute to you know, that process, like, please do check out the, the pull requests inside the CNCF TOC and uh, you know, add your comments and perspective in there. That's, that's one of the key things that the TOC members have been asking of us as a group and us individually uh, is to make sure that we help in the vetting process and any type of perspective that you can provide is, is welcome in those pull requests. So there's still an opportunity to do so. Any, any comments or anything else on the, the voting? That's pretty much all I wanted to cover for it. Great. Okay. All right, easy enough. Uh, the next item on here is the white paper update. Uh, at the end of the call uh, on our last session we had, I think Mike Rubin asked me for an update on where we are with the existing white papers that we had discussed working on. And you know, this, this is something that you know, we've had, I think the TOC has been discussing internally and, and I think the consistent feedback uh, from, from the TOC has been that you know, what we're describing in the white papers and, and some of that consensus that we got to in terms of what cloud native storage could be uh, is actually aligned to what some of them are thinking about, you know, kind of changing or updating uh, some of the general cloud native terminology to. Uh, if you look at the charter of the CNCF, TOC, uh, CNCF and you start reading the description of cloud native, uh, a lot of it's focused on microservices and it's focused on, you know, a, kind of a Kubernetes perspective from a, a little bit ago. And, and I think generally what's, what's being discussed is, hey, that, that kind of information about what cloud native is probably needs to be updated and it needs to serve as the foundation for what any of these sub papers are built on, whether it's cloud native storage or serverless or cloud native networking. And, and so that's something that the TOC really needs to, to, uh, to work on and, and provide so that we can actually start building on top of that type of pers that perspective. Uh, the other thing is that the TOC has been I think they, they understand that they haven't been clear with expectations about what they've been asking for, uh, whether it's individual, individual contributors or the, uh, the working groups themselves, and they're going to work on trying to be more clear. And, and for now, you know, consistent feedback from them is, uh, you know, we can have our meetings with the SWG or the working groups, you know, we'll discuss, you know, ecosystem things and, and whatever topics that we want to. Uh, but, you know, the, the contributors to the, in terms of the vetting process, you know, the TOC is definitely asking for individual contributors to be involved uh, to help, you know, vet the projects and, and provide different perspectives on, you know, how they're gonna be relevant or not. Uh, you know, generally for me though, I, I think that, yeah, I feel good about what, what we did in terms of those discussions and some of those email threads we had. I thought that we actually came, you know, we created a, a pretty good awareness or understanding of, you know, what we all thought cloud native could be or somewhere close in terms of cloud native storage. So I'm, I'm happy with kind of that, that work we did because it definitely provided me with a, a pretty a good perspective on it. Um, and, and I think that, you know, we'll build from that and, you know, pick up the white papers whenever the TOC, you know, asks us to do so and they have clear expectations. 
Any, any comments or feedback on that? Ben, anything to add or you good? Oh, no, nope, that's great. I realize I need to, yep, no, nope, that's great. Cool. I need to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so the next piece is a little bit of a CSI update for everybody. Uh, so not representing the CSI project, but uh, I'm doing this as a little bit of an intro to the next topic. Uh, you know, I put on the agenda to discuss uh, Rexray today to give you guys all a bit of a understanding of, you know, what the future of Rexray is. And it has a lot to do with the CSI project. So I thought it was important to just do a quick kind of brief CSI update for that. Uh, so that's, that's what this is. And that's why we have it here. The, you know, CSI is, is obviously, you know, in the category of, of cloud native storage interoperability. Uh, it was tagged at a 0.10 for the spec back in December. So, you know, thank you to the, the CSI orchestrator or the orchestrator team and, and the community. Tons of work last year to, to make CSI happen and to get it, you know, to that stable zero to one tag. Um, there's two implementations that we have so far that are, that are public. So the two are Kubernetes and, and Mesos, and they have their public documentation that describes how you can uh, get those things up and running. So that's, that's kind of excellent news that we've got some early implementations from COs. Uh, there's also other implementations. I think uh, the Kubernetes or the uh, Cloud Foundry team also has some progress. I'm not sure about the, the dates, but I'm sure we can get that info from Julian uh, at some point here. So exciting work from a CO perspective. We've, we've also got tons of, uh, well, not tons, but we've got early plugins for uh, on the 010 side as well. So there's a driver page under Kubernetes, which shows all the different uh, drivers that have been created as part of the Kubernetes CSI project. Uh, and then you've also got Mesosphere, who's created their own uh, initial CSI driver. So, you know, we've got working implementations end to end of plugins and COs. So that's, that's a great thing for you know, this early phase of the, the CSI project. Uh, the next thing in terms of like an action item for anybody who's out there who's looking to get involved in storage, you know, in the cloud native ecosystem, I think the biggest thing is going to be the space to face that comes up. But actually, before that, there are bi week or there's monthly meetings that happen for CSI. Uh, and you can find that at the GitHub CSI page under community. So please join there if you're interested in collaborating. Uh, but there's also a face to face that's going to be coming up where we have a link to the agenda in that deck. And the face-to-face, -face, they're going to cover topics such as, you know, what's going to be in CSI 0.2. Uh, and I think the most immediate and probably the most important topics there are going to be the CSI implementations themselves uh, and how they can make them better, how we can standardize on tooling and validation, et cetera. So some really critical stuff that's going to be discussed there, and I, I encourage you guys to, to join that. And that kind of leads into where we're getting with the, this very next phase of CSI, which is you know, making sure that we can actually start developing these, these plugins in easy ways. All right, next slide then. So what is CSI for, for anybody who's new to it? Uh, on the left side of this diagram, we had this, you know, environment where there, there were many integration points that, that you would pursue uh, if you wanted to be relevant to some of these cloud native uh, orchestrators. So you had, you know, the Docker volume driver interface, which I think was the, the, the first one that was created. Uh, you've got DVD CLI, which was a, a CLI uh, implementation into the Docker volume driver interface that Mesos used. You've got Kubernetes Flux, and you've got Cloud Foundry, and they actually implemented a early live storage client uh, for their, their interaction. So you really had four different ways to integrate storage uh, across the COs. And you know, that all turned into one thing, which is this new container storage interface project. So it's a, a great thing for, you know, for the user experience in cloud native. Uh, and it's really important for uh, ensuring that interoperability uh, works between COs and storage. Next slide, Ben. Uh, so what's you know, like, how do you actually be relevant in CSI? Uh, you know, from a, a simple perspective, like we're connecting apps to, to storage, right? That's, those are the black boxes. But in the middle there is a CSI interface and there's two implementations for CSI that we focus on. One is the, the CO side implementation uh, and the other is gonna be the plugin side implementation which is for the storage providers. And those are just you know, simply gRPC implementations. Next slide please. Uh, so the, the idea is uh, you know, we need everyone to create these, these, uh, these drivers. But there is a lot of work that and actually involved in creating a, a great driver. 
Uh, and that's where Rexray comes into play. So, so Rexray is a cloud native storage orchestration engine that's been around for a couple of years. Uh, it, its inception was around the Docker volume driver interface time, and then it you know, moved forward kind of following the, the ecosystem. Most recently, we've made changes to Rexray to architecturally align it to be a, a CSI native implementation. And, and what that means is that uh, you know, the focus of Rexray is gonna be providing value on top of any CSI drivers that are created, essentially kind of a, a middleware layer. Uh, but it should be transparent to the consumers. So anybody who's using uh, storage with any of the COs would be able to uh, you know, fire up a plugin or driver, and they may or may, may not even know that Rexray is, is running that driver, but it should make the experience for them you know, great. Uh, so to cluster providers and, and operators, it's gonna mean that when you actually start a, a plugin or a driver, uh, you're gonna have a great user or a great provider experience. So the instructions for the COs, the packaging relevant to the COs, that's all gonna be handled by, by Rexray and it's gonna be consistent across any of the storage platforms that Rexray is, is packaging as storage drivers. Uh, and then relevance to the storage pro projects and products, uh, you know, if you're a storage company out there or you have a storage project and, and you wanna be relevant to CSI, uh, Rexray is gonna be the, the least friction approach to creating a great CSI implementation. So if you've, ever, if you've created any of the, the Docker drivers or uh, Flex plugins or anything like that, I think you probably realize that there's a lot of common code that's being reused and common tooling that, not reused, but uh, that's duplicated across a lot of these different implementations. Um, so whether it's the, you know, that type of you know, common tool set or common packaging or processes, or whether it's just simply documentation, like you know, that's all redundant information that you know, we wanna to try to simplify and standardize to, to help create a better experience. So you get that, and then also there's gonna be enterprise features that are built into the Rexray middleware, Rexray framework, uh, that, that it would be able to provide to any of the CSI drivers that are created. And then the last point is that, you know, if you build a CSI driver and Rexray is packaging it, it also has a interoperability layer so that it can actually um, uh, help integrate, or it will integrate against existing interfaces lock, like the Docker volume driver. So create a CSI driver, Rexray packages it, uh, and it's relevant to today for any CSI implementation COs, and also tomorrow or before or whenever for any of the existing uh, interfaces like the Docker volume driver interface. Um, Rexray architecturally shifted to CSI about four months ago or so, even before the 01 tag of CSI. So we've been doing this for a bit. Uh, it's already got 15 CSI drivers. Uh, out of the 15 drivers, I think that three of them are at the 01 stage, and then the other 12 will soon to be moved to 01 uh, once we have the next release of Rexray. All right, Ben, next slide. Uh, so what does this look like from a consistent pa packaging perspective? Like what is, what's the target uh, from our perspective? Well, today, like in, you know, with CSI, uh, everybody's going to create their own plugin, how it get, gets packaged and where it gets shipped uh, and how it gets RAM. Like it's, there's nothing in the specification that actually determines that. And that's one way to think about this is like, you know, the CSI spec is going to define just the direct interoperability between a storage platform and a CO, but it's not going to define the user experience spec. Like what is, what is really expected to, to really help this project be successful. And so from our perspective, uh, you know, this is a pretty exa good example of where we think things need to go. Uh, in the, in, for, from a Docker volume driver perspective, it started out as, hey, everybody create their own uh, process or their, you know, their own app or tool uh, or plugin and, or, or um, you know, volume driver. And, you know, people are going to run it in every way, any way that they want to. And then what we moved to after that with Docker is Docker managed plugins. And this is where, you know, you took this, the process or tool, you packaged it up as a container, uh, and all of a sudden there was a standard way that you'd actually deploy and run the plugin and the user experience was much, much better. Uh, and that's essentially, I think, where CSI has to go as well. well. And this is just showing you what that looks like uh, from a Docker perspective. So from a Docker hub on the left side there, you see that Rexray, the Rexray repo itself or the Rexray org uh, has you know, 12 or so managed Docker plugins that are all containerized and, and very, very, very easy to get up and running. Okay, next slide, Ben. Uh, so how do you actually create a, a Rexray driver? Uh, I hope it's been clear so far, but 
the, the only thing that you actually have to do is create a CSI driver. Uh, because we are a native CSI implementation and we use CSI drivers in the back end to actually talk to any storage platform. So what I, you know, if you're, if you're interested in this uh, or if you want to collaborate, the way to start down this path is to look at the Go CSI package, uh, which is something that, that is going to have uh, what we'll call interceptors, which I'll describe in a second, uh, but also is going to have kind of a, a standard template for how you create a plugin that Rexray would be able to communicate with. Uh, there's one kind of simple requirement that makes it Rexray compatible, uh, and that's all kind of in the, the Go CSI package. Um, once that happens, once you create a driver, those drivers are not submitted to the Rexray uh, code base at all. Those drivers are actually kept in a separate repo. And that might be Rexray slash a driver if it's going to be a part of the Rexray project. Uh, or it might be something that's held within your projects repo, like CSI dash, you know, my, my storage platform. Uh, the packaging of this, the Rexray tool with your driver uh, happens uh, separately from the creation of your driver itself. Uh, another key point here is that the, the Rexray architecture pre-CSI was focused on some, what we'll call uh, lib storage. I think that you know, a handful of you are probably familiar with what that is. Uh, essentially, lib storage was a, a similar, it had, it had a similar goal of CSI in, in terms of creating a universal API. And so all of the Rexray drivers in the past were lib storage drivers. Uh, now, as of three or four months ago, all of the drivers are being moved to being native CSI drivers. All right, next slide. <clears throat> so how does it actually do this? How does this all work? Uh, I think a pretty simple visual depiction of it. Uh, you've got in the middle there on the left, the Rexray engine. Uh, you've got the, the ability to, to advertise this, uh, this kind of northbound incoming interface for Docker volume drivers, but also at the same time, any of the CSI providers. Uh, and then the back end communication happens to the storage platforms by way of this CSI driver. So, so in summary, uh, like Rexray is going to provide you know, the common user experience, right? It's going to package up any of the CSI drivers. Uh, it's going to, uh, it has a uh, pretty well-tuned CI/CD process for publishing uh, the actual artifacts in different places, uh, and then it's going to provide a, a layer of middleware uh, to, or it's actually going to use the middleware within your PC to add value on top of any of these CSI drivers that are created. All right, next slide. Um, so, so the. I mean, the, the purpose of it right now, or where we're at with Rexray, is that we're really trying to support the CSI ecosystem. I think that the CSI team, you know, solved a, a huge technical challenge of, of, you know, getting storage closer to applications and making sure that, that uh, the interop was, uh, was, was better than it was before. Um, and I think it's also solved a challenge for storage companies and storage platforms because we can just focus on one interface. Uh, versus having to pick and choose and, and divide our efforts and, and have uh, and have you know not as, as great implementations at that point, but there's still work to be done to to make this good. Um, getting to CSI stability is really going to require that people use the plugins. Uh, and for example, like if if I'm thinking about the Kubernetes world, uh, I've got a lot of entry plugins in Kubernetes right now. And you know, why would I go and use a alpha CSI plugin if the entry plugin works just fine, right? So, so getting people to actually start using these CSI plugins, uh, which is kind of a key point of, of maturing the, the adoption of, or getting CSI adopted and, and maturing it and getting it to stable, it's gonna require that people kind of take that jump and use these new plugins instead of the entry plugins in Kubernetes. And to do that, we're going to have to make sure that it's got a great user experience. So, you know, Rexray is, is setting, that, setting us up for that. Uh, I think that the you know, standardizing the implementation of the plugins uh, is kind of a key to helping, you know, mature and, and help the ecosystem move forward. Uh, and, and I think a key measure of success is like, for example, the Kubernetes ecosystem, if, you know, someone decides to use an equivalent CSI driver, instead of the, instead of the uh, entry Kubernetes driver, and I think that we've done the right thing and we're mo moving in the right direction. Hey Clint, uh, just a question on this. Um, so, sounds like your, your, you know, your goal is essentially to help see adoption of CSI with Rexray. Um, yeah. 
Is there any reason why this work doesn't go into the CSI project itself? Uh, I, I think that up to this point, the CSI project maintainers have discussed it to say uh, they want to make sure that the ecosystem grows around the project before they think about bringing things in. Uh, there is, I think there's many things from a, a coding perspective that the CSI project would be interested in. And I think the short term of what they, they described in the roadmap is the validation tooling uh, and not necessarily like a, a kind of a middleware layer like this. Uh, and I think that's one way to differentiate it is like what CSI as a project is going to bring in is going to be things that are very, very specific to the specification and things that are abstract of COs. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, it's clear from their intentions. And then something like Rexray is going to be that layer on top, which is helping standardize the user experience side uh, when it comes to how you actually consume these, these drivers with the COs. Does that make sense? To just add to that a little bit, that's exactly right. We wanted to keep the spec as minimal as possible initially, especially now that we're pre 1.0 and not add libraries and additional packaging requirements. Um, we want those to emerge naturally. Rexray is a great example of, uh, of something that's coming out naturally. We don't want to pick a winner here. And then once the project matures and there are go-to libraries that everybody is, is using, we can consider pulling those into the CSI project itself. And that's, that's actually kind of what I'm, what I'm um, uh, asking about. If Rexray emerges as the, you know, the best packaging for CSI, then doesn't it eventually become part of the CSI project? It, it, it could, but I, I think that there, like, if I think about the next couple of years, uh, you've, you're going to have CSI, right? And you're going to have these more, the more religious side of CSI or the more direct implementation of CSI as, as these libraries. Uh, and then you're also going to have, you know, you're going to need some type of tooling that provides a layer of innovation, which moves somewhat separately from CSI because there's going to be things that, that you want to add, you know, that can add value to these drivers that CSI is going to say, Hey, like, I don't know if that belongs or not. Uh, let's, let's see, let's see how it goes. Let's see if the community, you know, cares or not before we actually bring that into the spec. And, you know, as an example, uh, one of the things is, uh, encryption. Right? So one of the things that Rexray is going to add to uh, you know, what it's going to provide to any driver is it'll actually bring a, uh, once you actually advertise a device, it'll advertise a shadow device from DMCrypt, and then you'll have you know, in-place encryption for any of your CSI drivers. Like that may be something that the CSI spec could call out in the future, but, but I don't think so because it's really just an interface. Uh, and, and so I think that there's going to be this like give and take between, as innovation moves forward, you know, where you're, we're going to want to do things that, you know, add value on top of CSI. And sometimes those things are going to end up in the CSI spec, maybe as additional methods or, or what have you, or maybe code. Uh, but other times it's really going to be long living outside of it. So I, I kind of see a world where there's, there's definitely a need to like enhance and augment and contribute things to the CSI spec. But sometimes that's, uh, sometimes things like don't belong there and should be a little bit abstract of it. And I think that's where Rexray is going to play. I think that, um, uh this is really cool stuff because CSI in a way is the primitives of a, a young system. And I think that uh, anything that we can add on top really helps. So. Yeah. Cool. All right, Clint, could you talk yeah. about what the, uh, could you talk about what the middleware does in the context of Raspberry? Yeah, so, so the gRPC has these uh, interceptors and you know, when you're building a, a plugin, uh, a CSI driver, you know, if you want to build a good one, right, you're going to do the stuff that we always do, right? You're going to add your, your logging, uh, your authentication, your authorization, like you know, these things that you just typically build in there, right? It, it takes effort to actually do and do the right way. So there's an ability within with gRPC to add in interceptors and the interceptors are where we're going to augment and enhance the CSI drivers. Uh, so as we list out some of the, the things that we're thinking about, I have it on the roadmap slide, like a lot of those things are going to come to fruition through just injecting interceptors, uh, which mean that, you know, you, you create a, a native CSI driver that is focused on, you know, implementing 
your core features of your source platform for like your CRUD operations and your, your orchestration operations. And then these interceptors just come in extensively uh, to add value on top. I see. So basically it's a way to augment operations, um, status operations through extra fields or commands. Yeah, I, I mean, in a simple way is just to say, hey, like logging. Uh, how can we make logging standard across the drivers? Well, one way to do that is just to add an interceptor for logging. And all of a sudden you can add context IDs and, and things that are valuable for tracing operations. So it's, it's just a, in gRPC, it's a great way that you can just easily bring in these, these core things that make your implementation better. And, and Clint, just to test that for a second, um, I, I realized that there's a huge effort in making CSI fairly well scoped so that we can ship it. Um, but do you see, for example, of interceptors um, being a feature of CSI in the future? I mean, it's not, if, it's, if yeah. it's valuable to the ecosystem, then it's yeah. valuable to CSI. Yeah, exactly. That, that maybe, I think that's how you implement some of this extra value. And I think logging, for example, uh, or, or something that may be contributed to CSI, um, we've got this Go CSI package, and that's where some of these interceptors live. And uh, I think that that kind of thing would be valuable to everybody, and it's something in the core to just like creating a, a great plugin aside from what your perspective is. And that's an example of something that we'd say uh, that we would introduced to the CSI project and see you know, what the response is. Uh, and, and so there's other things that, are, that we do in interceptors as well, which may not be uh, the same thing. So maybe it's going to be um, you know, authorization, authentication, like there's kind of a list of other things that we can do in a similar way that may not be valid things to submit to the CSI project. But the middleware and the, the interceptors is just how we do this without changing each of the CSI drivers with, with key, keeping those CSI drivers very native to the storage platforms. Okay. I, I guess my, my um, concern, and maybe it's, it's unfounded at this point, but it, there's value in having one point of interop where people build things, you know, at the, everybody agrees to some layer that they that build drivers to, and I, I worry if we have two levels of it that that the message gets diluted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I hear you there. I think that I just think that over time, like we're going to need somewhere to be very innovative uh, and somewhere to test out, you know, whether people care about some of these things, you know, before they make it down into a spec. So yeah. like CSI labs, this Rextray is like CSI labs. It it can be. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's one way that you could think about it. Um, yeah. The, the way that I like to think about it is that CSI, ultimately, the things that it dictates are the specification, the protocol to interact between a cluster orchestrator and a volume plugin. And those are the only things that it dictates. Everything else that goes around in how you make that interface exist uh, our, our CSI will never dictate it. It may suggest it, it may recommend it, but it'll never dictate it. So while we're starting the project, we're just focusing on what exactly that interface should look like. We haven't, we've purposefully avoided uh, defining what the packaging should look like. That can differ from CO to CO. Defining what logging, authorization, all these things are going to look like. Uh, if you go to the Kubernetes project, you'll see we recommended one way to deploy it on Kubernetes, um, but we want these uh, ha the the how to naturally emerge, and uh, Rexray is is uh, is one one way to do that. Uh, ultimately, if it ends up that there is just a very common standard way that folks are creating CSI volume plugins, then it may make sense to pull that into the CSI project itself as here is some recommended packaging that you can use, but you don't have to. Ultimately, all you have to do is uh, create something that implements the interface. It doesn't matter how, in order to create a compatible CSI driver. You can use this optional tooling if you want to, but you don't have to. Well said, Brad. Yeah, the one Hi. thing I'm tri tripped up on is um, if Rexray is, uh, a CNCF project, does that, uh, do we start thinking about common sets of packaging or a common interface for packaging on CSI? That, 
that's the part. I, I completely understand what you said, said about not man, you know, all the critical pieces in, in core CSI. Yeah. But I think this is in the context of Rexray as a CNCF project. Yeah, that's right. Hi, actually, this is Chakri. So yeah, after developing some drivers, right, like I was part of the Kubernetes CSI effort, I realized that a tooling like this will really help because there's a lot of duplication. And if every vendor has to go ahead and do all the stuff, there's a lot of common code which can be avoided. And some storage systems might want to implement only a few of the APIs and maybe can leverage something like this. That will really help them. Yeah. Cool. So I guess uh, the question for, for you, Clint, is um, would you be interested in um, donating parts of Rexray at some point in the future to the CSI project? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, we're open to that discussion. You know, I consider like Go CSI kind of a, a, a part of the, the Rexray project. And mm -hmm. that's kind of a, a great example of something that we've tried to keep you know, religious and specific to the CSI implement or, uh, interface itself. And uh, it's that, that kind of thing, more parts of it that we'd be very interested in, in contributing, you know, once you mm -hmm. ask for it. Cool. Yeah, it feels like a case of batteries included but not required kind of, you know, it would be great if CSI had a, didn't mandate a packaging story, but had part of the CSI project had a couple of, you know, suggestions, maybe even implementations of packaging that could help people get started. Yep, totally agree. Okay, and I, I so I, I kind of entered this to say, hey, well, I didn't want to have a whole, you know, we're not having a whole CSI discussion here. I know that Rexray is largely focused on it, and, and that's what I was talking about. Uh, but I encourage you guys to, to join the face-to-face -face and vote on when that face-to-face -face is going to be, because uh, I think it's this kind of discussion that, you know, we'll carry on in there and uh, it'll get pretty lively. So, uh, good stuff. All right, let's go to the next slide, then. Great, Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the, the roadmap, so what are we, what are we thinking about? And, and this is where, you know, one, we wanna get it contributed to a foundation. I think that one of the, the challenges we've had with the project over the last couple of years is, uh, is really the collaboration from other storage companies. And it's unfortunate, but like in the storage ecosystem, you know, it tends to be very competitive. And uh, you know, the project itself has been under EMC Code and Code LMC and, and uh, the Code team. And you know, we'd love to get it to a foundation because I think that once we get there, I think we'll, we'll have more collaborators working on it together. Uh, so that's one of our goals for the year, just to increase collaboration uh, and get more folks involved in it. Uh, as part of the Z012 and, and 1.x releases coming up, you know, number one and the biggest thing is, is being 100% CSI uh, 0.1 compatible. Uh, the, the current Rexray release is uh, the, the pre-01 tag, so there's some small changes to get that up to date. Once that happens, like all 13 or so of Rexray's drivers are all CSI compatible right away, uh, CSI 0.1 compatible. So that's, that's number one. Um, the, you know, we'll continue to, to uh, provide the interop capability with all those CSI drivers and the existing ones through Docker, Cloud Foundry, uh, the Kubernetes Flux, et cetera, and Mesos. So that's, that's going to be in there still. Uh, but when we get to the, the enterprise user experience, I'm actually really interested to hear you know, feedback, you know, separately, maybe not here on a call, but separately, if you guys are interested in getting engaged, you know, what is it that the enterprises of people who are actually going to use this stuff, like what do they care about uh, and what do we need to do to make this a great user experience? Uh, the first thing that we thought about was the, the deployment. So for any of the COs, we need a simple and consistent deployment and management of these, these plugins. Uh, the second thing is about security and credential integration. Uh, so if we're going to be, you know, configuring these plugins and we want to store our credentials or we're going to be asking for sensitive credentials, uh, we got to use uh, something else to actually store those, whether the CO provides it through like a future CSI, you know, API that we add, who knows. Uh, but I think for right now, we just need to make sure we have external integration through something like Vault uh, to store these sensitive, sensitive credentials. Um, we need to make sure that we're tracing and logging and, and providing metric integration. Uh, so that we can actually record all the events and, and provide all the visibility to what's going on with these plugins. So those are, those are three key things that we want to make sure we accomplish uh, for the user experience. And I think it's, it's arguable that like, those are three key things that everybody should do with their plugins, right? but they're not easy to do. Uh, so if we can provide that all through Rexray, I think there's tons of value in, in just packaging your, your driver within Rex. Uh, you know, another thing that, that some run into with their CSI uh, deployments or CSI plugins is scale. Um, 
we've got centralized API throttling on the, on the docket. And so what does that mean? So if you've got a, uh, and this is actually really difficult to pull off with CSI. If you've got, um, if you've got AWS, for example, and you've got, you know, 10 hosts or, or maybe like 10 different clusters, uh, you're going to have a bunch of CSI plugins running. If all of those plugins are in independently trying to use the AWS API, it's going to saturate it very, very quickly. Uh, if you've got one Kubernetes cluster today, like centrally that it manages it, but what if you've got like 10 different Kubernetes clusters, like how can you centrally like throttle that stuff? Uh, so one of the things that we're adding to, to Rexray is etcd integration so that it can increase the item potency domain beyond just a single implementation. So you can truly actually, you know, lock and, and limit the API calls uh, to that single AWS endpoint. So that's, that's kind of a cool thing that we'll be adding um, that, that can provide value for, for any, any storage platform. Uh, the next thing here is extended volume functionality. So data, data at rest encryption, I mentioned that earlier that if you've got a, any platform that's providing block storage, uh, we can add a middleware step where we add a, uh, an encryption shadow device through DM crypt, uh, and then any, any data at rest is encrypted. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, the next thing is gonna be the following the CSI updates. So whether it's volume property updates like size and IOPS, uh, or whether it's snapshots and replication, right, those are both gonna be introduced as uh, they get defined in CSI. Uh, next thing is availability. Uh, so there, there is, with certain platforms, the, the need to extend availability beyond where it is today. Uh, for example, in, in some of the, I mean, in CSI today, there, there isn't a, a part of it that defines you know, what to do if a volume is locked, like if a volume cannot be moved while a instance is powered on. Uh, it's a manual operation to actually make that happen, most likely. And so I think there's probably some work and an early implementation that can happen within something like Rex. Uh, to handle the situation where volumes are locked and you have to do forceful detaches. Uh, and then eventually, like if that is successful, we can figure out how to move that into CSI. Uh, but availability is another thing, you know, in terms of enterprises, uh, we just need to make sure it's, it's fully tested and you know, support uh, at a global level across the, the volume plugins. And then extensibility wise, like we're planning on integrating it to you know, the, the portfolio of CNCF projects. Uh, so whether that's you know, Falls or etcd, which I mentioned already, uh, or whether it's Jaeger Open Tracing, Fluentd, or Prometheus, like you know, those are all things that I think are valid to get these plugins in a standard way, like hooked up to, to provide information. All right, next slide. All right, so the the history of releases with Rexray, uh, we've had seventy eight, so pretty consistently uh, over the past couple of years with Rex. Uh, so that's that top chart on the right. Uh, in terms of activity, we've had a pretty steady increase in activity at the repo. So we're at, uh, I think about a thousand stars right now. Uh, we've had uh, 150,000 or so bin tray downloads of Rexray. Uh, and you know, the, uh, that was actually the past year. And then the Docker Hub downloads were, were over 50,000. All right, next slide. The, uh, the contributors, like this is where we're trying to increase it. This is the contributors over time on the left side. Uh, we've had 42 individual contributors of code uh, and then 264 collaborators, collaborators in the project with GitHub issues and, and other things. Uh, and then on the right side, you can see that steady growth again of the stars. All right, next slide. All right, so, uh, so why, why Rexray? We want to help get, get CSI stable. Uh, and, you know, in terms of getting it to the foundation, I think that it's a, the right thing to do to, to help increase the collaboration on the project. Uh, I think, you know, having a, a ecosystem where we have many CSI implementations is going to be a great thing. So Rexray is going to be focused on, um, on being one of those implementations. And I think with our experience as a team and working in this area, we're pretty laser focused on, you know, what we're hearing from customers uh, and what we think is going to help the CSI community move forward and, and mature. So having in the foundation, having collaborators in the project, uh, is going to be a great thing for us. Um, any, any comments or thoughts on that? I mean, that's, that's pretty much the, the Rex Ray pitch that we're thinking about as we talk to the, the CNCF about it. Sir, first, first Clint, th thanks for presenting. Um, it's a great presentation and, and it uh, fostered a bunch of great discussions. So yeah, um, love, to, love to get comments from folks as we uh, think about presenting this to the TOC.
Um, I, I, actually, I had a, a quick question. Um, so in my, uh, this is Matt from, from Daytera. Uh, I was wondering in, for Rexray, is there a focus on, you, you, you seem to be providing this, this functionality on top of uh, what CSI is defined as. Uh, and I want to, for, from the perspective of a vendor, are, is there a focus on making sure that there are vendor pass-throughs? So like say if a vendor already has hardware level encryption built in uh, and they don't necessarily need to use the de-encrypt option that you have in Rexway, is there a way to bypass that and to use the, the vendor's option or the, the vendor's capabilities? Yeah, if it's built into your, uh, your driver, I mean, that's, that's kind of the nice thing about architecturally where, where Rexway's gone now is that you know, Rexray just packages up native CSI drivers. So whether your CSI driver just runs standalone and just is a CSI driver and, and does, you know, the minimal functionality you expect it to, that's great. Uh, you know, but it is, you, could, you would implement those core encrypted features inside of your CSI driver. Uh, and then Rexray would be able to use those. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting parameter to say, like, do not allow extra middle, do not allow like Rexray's encryption capability, uh, but do allow all the, all the other things that Rexray provides. I don't think that we've thought from that perspective yet, uh, but it would definitely be something that we would consider. And, and I think something that's important so you don't have people duplicating that level of encryption. Uh, yeah, uh, awesome. That's uh, pretty much what I'm looking for. Uh, a lot of, you know, what we do as a vendor is trying to implement the fastest way of, of doing these things, you know, because we have access to the hardware layer. Um, and, and so, you know, duplicating that, that sort of effort at the software layer is, uh, seems excessive. <laughs> well, it could be, but you're, you're also talking about like, I mean, if we get into storage stuff here, um, you've got like, you may be, well, I guess it depends on your client implementation. Like if you have a client that's doing the, uh, the, you know, in-flight encryption of that as it gets stored and encrypted, like, you know, at the device or what have you, I think you're okay. But DM crypt would provide a layer of encryption for someone who doesn't do in-flight encryption, but may do at rest encryption on the platform. So it just, I think it all kind of depends, but yeah, I agree with you. Like, you know, that, that capability to say, no, like we never want to allow, you know, two lever levels of encryption. Like we could probably have that as a parameter. And so it'd be great feedback to have from you if you're interested in collaborating on that. Okay, thanks. Great. Any other comments out there? Um, I have questions. So, uh, are there any like adaptation of Rex Ray other than the EMC code team? Is it, I'm sorry. What was the question? Uh, uh, the question is uh, about diversity. I think so. Are there any adaptation of Rex Ray or like POCs or trials or use cases? Uh, like from other companies other than uh, yeah we've so, code. yeah yeah absolutely uh, I mean if you go through the github issues you'll see lots of questions and people involved in the project I mean there's you know 40 plus collaborators and contributors to it so those are all people that have been actively involved uh, we've got a splash page that li lists you know customers and, and you know, organizations that we've worked with on the project in the past uh, so there's definitely lots of lots of adoption of it uh, I think that you know, in terms of this use case of persistent storage with applications, uh, you know, the primary focus of Rexray has been Docker and, and Mesos. And, and it's only been recently with Kubernetes as, as, you know, we've adopted CSI that, hey, now there's this new opportunity with this, the Kubernetes ecosystem to be relevant. So I think that the, you know, the adoption and interest in this type of project is only going to increase uh, because of CSI's uh, CSI and because of the, you know, future move as K Kubernetes uh, you know, moves towards CSI and less of the less focus on the entry drivers. Great. Any other questions? Okay, great. Excellent. Um, so let's do this. Let's use now um, the last few minutes just to talk about uh, future topics. So folks have. Um, uh, anything that they'd like to be presented in the future, discussions they'd like to have. Um, I'd love to hear them and we can capture them here and then uh, Clint and I can reach out to folks and um, try to get some stuff scheduled. Yeah. So I, I see we have Minio um, up. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's, uh, that's scheduled for next week too. So we'll have a, a 20 to 30 minute chunk that they're confirmed. So we're looking for um, one more project for next week and beyond. Anybody out there? Hi, uh, this is Kiran from OpenEPS. Uh, not for the next week, but the week after that, uh, we would like to present as well. Okay, great. It'll actually be the meeting after, so it'll be uh, four weeks from now. That's right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Um, if uh, any folks are interested in presenting, uh, please reach out to either Clint or myself, um, and we will uh, we'll get some stuff scheduled. Um, otherwise, I think we can break early. Um, thanks again, Clint, for presenting on Rex Ray, um, and see you guys all next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.